A Faulkner County judge in hot water over comments he made on a message board. Now he's facing new allegations that could affect a previous ruling he made by millions of dollars. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in. I am Aaron Nolan. Bob and Ashley have the evening off. Mike Maggio already gave up his run for appellate judge. KRK4's David Goins joins us with new developments that could affect whether Maggio can keep his current post. David. That's right, Aaron. This doesn't actually circle around Maggio's comments he made on that message board. Rather, what role did campaign money play in how he handled a, wrong, a wrongful death case of a Faulkner County nursing home patient? And for the first time, as you're about to see, members of that family speaking out and taking action. I just don't think the system's set up to protect people like us. Rosie Perkins and her sister Rhonda lost their mom, Martha Bull, six years ago at a Greenbrier nursing home. And last summer, a Faulkner County jury awarded the family $5 million as part of a wrongful if death lawsuit until Judge today, Mike Maggio lowered the award I, I to $1 million. To most of us, it didn't seem right, but, you know, we're just a, a family that tries to take care of ourselves. Until documents unearthed by liberal blogger Matt Campbell earlier this week showing $21,000 in donations made to political action committees days before Maggio lowered the damage amount. The money coming from the owner of the nursing home. It's just, it's just hard to say from where I'm sitting. But it's enough for Rosie and her sister to walk to the Judicial Discipline Commission office in downtown Little Rock this afternoon and hand over paperwork outlining the timing of donations to Maggio. The only way that anyone else's mother, grandmother, is not going to be done wrong is for us to follow this through and make sure that the judges that rule on this take a lot of the people that they're supposed to be representing. And calls to Judge Maggio's chambers in Faulkner County today were unreturned, as were our calls to Mike Morton, who's the nursing home owner whose interest wrote checks the day Judge Maggio held a hearing that ultimately lowered that award against the Greenbrier Nursing Home. Back to you. David, these documents have been moved to the Judicial Commission. What is next in this case? Well, the Judicial Commission, uh, I spoke with them today. Essentially, they cannot talk about any particular uh, investigation if one is started, uh, but just from a big sense, uh, they'll take a look at these documents, and if an investigation is, in fact, uh, put underway, uh, that'll happen probably in the next uh, few weeks. David Goins, thank you so much. We appreciate that. And because safety matters, shocking video of a brawl in Saline County and one person involved says it started with a bullying at Bryant High School. KRK4 Hubert Tate shows us where the investigation stands now. Hubert, what's going on? Well, Aaron, the father of the boy who was bullied asked not to be identified out of fear. The fights not happened on Bryant High School's campus. It actually happened in Alexander off campus. The video shows groups of people arriving at the Northeast Lane County Fire Department. That's where the father of the boy claiming to have been bullied says he planned to meet with the accused bully's mother to talk about that problem. The court affidavit says she brought family and friends to begin an assault. We attempted to speak with a couple of people. Nobody really wanted to talk to us about the incident. Saline County deputies say with limited details, they could not arrest anyone at the time, but the prosecutor's office sought and got a two-party warrant on the case, which requires the parents involved to appear in court. Also, we did reach out to the Bryant School District about what happened. A spokeswoman says the alleged bullying was thoroughly investigated by one of the assistant principals, and district handbook procedure was followed. Of course, since the actual fight happened off campus, the district has nothing to do with that investigation. By the way, online right now as a web extra video of the full fight. Aaron. Hey, thank you so much. We appreciate that. If you drive along Interstate 30 in Little Rock fairly often, you may have seen a billboard battle over marriage and fidelity. Little Rock-based Family Life placed this ad on the interstate just west of the Chico Road exit, urging folks to keep their vows in marriage. The idea was to combat another billboard, this one, just across I-30. It shows former presidents Franklin Roosevelt, John F. Kennedy, and Bill Clinton as a way to promote dating while married. This is not the kind of thing we really need in our community. We need, we need people standing up for marriage, talking about how we make marriage go the distance and all about fidelity and trust in marriage, because that's what it's about. The ad showing the presidents was placed on the interstate by a group called Ashley Madison. It's an organization pairing married people with others to form extramarital relationships. 
In our global society, just about everything we need is on the internet. But for many parts of the state, the World Wide Web is either not available or users find it extremely slow. KRK4's Dustin Barnes joins us live from the Capitol where lawmakers approve faster service for some students. Dustin. Yeah, Aaron, lawmakers approved a $5 million matching grant program to help rural school districts improve their internet connectivity. Now, leader, I went to one of those districts today, and the leaders there tell me that this will enhance the learning environment there. At Minor Academy in Bauxite, this classroom is as 21st century as you can get. We have an entire school building that is completely online. This building houses the latest in technology to prepare students for tomorrow. But when the internet connection goes offline, teachers have to step back into yesteryear. If they can't access those and that's in their lesson plan that they had planned to use, that disrupts their whole day or their whole lesson. Since Bauxite is located in the outer lying parts of Saline County, internet connectivity is slim to none out here. Here at the school, the connection slows down massively when so many people are using it. Accessing online resources opens up the whole, a whole new world for our students and teachers. But service is expected to improve for districts like Bauxite. Leaders from rural school districts can apply for the broadband facilities matching grant program. The state will match funds the district pledges to put up to increase the megabytes used to operate the internet. It's going to help a lot of schools you know, make that jump instead of just making small steps towards where they need to be. Bauxite Technology Director Tyler Tarver says it can be expensive to increase the bandwidth without any help. But now that schools are getting a lift, leaders say it helps to lead students to their dreams. And the state wants 100 megabytes of broadband for every 1,000 students. Bauxite has 50 megabytes, and they have over 1,600 students, so they say that they will definitely be applying for this grant to get to where they need to be. Live at the Capitol, Dustin Barnes, KARK 4 News. Dustin, great information there. We appreciate that. A Jefferson County couple accused of running an illegal puppy mill pleaded guilty to only 10 counts out of 186 of animal cruelty. James and Tara Best cited uh, after the sheriff's office found nearly 200 animals living in horrible conditions at Busy Bee Pets. Some animals had no access to food, water, or care. Now, as part of their plea deal, they'll serve a one-year probation. Each must pay $2,000, and they are not allowed to own any domesticated or wild animals for any reasons. A tribute to fallen soldiers happening this weekend. It's the Arkansas run for the fallen soldier. This is video of last year's closing ceremony of the run. Now this year, planners will run 140 miles from Ozark to the capital city, remembering each person killed in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. Well, I fought in uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom and um, I went there with my best friend and he was killed in action in Afghanistan. So uh, it's, it's, it's very, very important to me. If you want to be a part of this event, it all gets started tomorrow. It ends on Sunday. New cars mean new technology, but what about those old classics? More on a mechanic whose work is a labor of love tonight in our Only in Arkansas segment. And I'll tell you what, mid-March doesn't get much better than this. Plenty of sunshine, a chilly start, but a comfortable afternoon high temperature of 69 degrees here in Little Rock. It may get a little better tomorrow, but maybe not so nice over the weekend. We'll let you know what's in store in just a couple minutes. From the station that brings you local news that matters, this is KARK 4 News at 6 in high definition. With Bob Clausen, Ashley Katz, Chief Meteorologist Keith Monahan, and Aaron Peters with your Razorback Nation report.